Welcome folks to the very first episode of a series of videos we're calling Boxes of Water. This is where Lisa and I are gonna travel around the country meeting with fish keepers, telling their stories and helping them out with their aquariums. And boy, do I have a good one to start off with today. Last month, we traveled to Prospect, Connecticut because I received an email from a gentleman that as soon as I read it, I knew we had to tell his story. This is a Marine that was shot three times by an AK-47 in Vietnam, spent two and a half years in the hospital, and after he battled all that time, he lost his right arm. Did he fall apart and turn to drugs and other self-destructive things like so many do? No. Instead, he decided to commit the rest of his professional career to assisting veterans with disabilities and PTSD. And he found fish keeping. This quite possibly could be the most important video we have ever made. I hope you enjoy it as much as we enjoyed making it and visiting with him and his wife, Linda. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to a Vietnam veteran with the United States Marine Corps, a Purple Heart recipient, a member of the Connecticut Veterans Hall of Fame, an incredible fish keeper, and a true American hero, Mr. William Mason. So these are all custom aquariums tanks. Yes, they are, except for that one. But that's being replaced by a custom aquarium tank. I'm, I ordered the 240, because okay. that's a 180, that's a DIY. I did that tank over. You gonna um, send that down to me when you get the new 240? Because I could use it in, in my fish shots. Hey, you, you know, <laughs> no, nobody's kidding. taking it yet. Um, <laughs> you got all kinds of Mbunas in there too. Yeah, I do. It's this mixture. Some. You got some peacocks in there too. And, yes. And, so, and the peacocks are getting along with them fine. You know what is one of my favorite things to see in an African cichlid tank? Is fish that are not damaged. They're, they're not damaged. That means they're in there, they're happy, they're not fighting. Now, this, these are mixed breeds because what happened was Ron and I were talking and I got some abunas and and I brought him in his babies, and, and I got some uh, Victorians, brought him in his babies, and had him in a 90, and let him go crazy to see what I was gonna get. So those yellow labs are gonna be moved in with him, these guys, and the back of the tank, because I won't have towers, gonna be all rock right to the top. I know a guy who did that before. Oh, you did that. Yeah, I did. <laughs> Looked good, too. It I looks know. good. I hope you like the natural algae look on rocks because good luck cleaning it off when you have all of them back there. I did that, but I used it. That was brown yesterday, completely brown. But like when I was an artist, I take a toothbrush and I go in there and I, and I just do so much. And well, that's it, why your tanks look as good as they and do. And when it appeals to my eye, it, it, it makes sense. I was 17, I had, my, my father was very brutal. And so I went in the Marine Corps. On my 18th birthday, on March 5th, I broke formation, went to my sergeant, asked permission to see the captain. And I went, walked in the office and the captain said, what can I do for you, Marine? He said, I wanna, I wanna go to Vietnam, sir. Wow. And he said, why do you want to go to Vietnam? I said, because my three of my friends are going to Vietnam. And I thought I was going to be a mortarman in Vietnam, because that's what I, I was, a, was with the 3rd Marine Division at Pendleton. And I was a mortarman. I mean, I dropped rounds and tubes, and I was very good at it. And far away from... Far away from everybody. So I thought, <laughs> what the hell? I don't... So I get to Okinawa, and... We landed in Okinawa, we were supposed to stay there for three days. I was gone in 24 hours. They put me on an aircraft, Continental Airlines, <laughs> flew me into Da Nang, and we went, I remember when the plane landed, I was kind of scared. And when I got out of the plane, the, tar the heat from the tarmac was 
you could roast, I mean, you could fry right there. Wow. And they sent me, they put me on a truck going to the 1st Marine Division. I said, no, third, I'm supposed to leave on another helicopter. No, you're going to 1st Marine Division. And I got out there and they said, I, they told me to report to Kilo Company as a grunt. So I got there and now I'm really in shock. And, and I got there, the, there was Sergeant, his name was, we called him Canada. And he says, you're our new radio operator. Oh. You're fresh meat. You're our new radio operator. So I became a radio guy. Wow. And I, and I lasted two and a half months. I was shot in, um, up by Quang Tri Province, up in Quang Tri Province, Vietnam. Hmm. And I was medevaced by the Army, not by the Navy, or by the Marines. So I didn't go to the hospital ship. I ended up uh, in Da Nang in an Army hospital. And so, just like TV, uh, the helicopter that, that Chinook took me to um, a, a, a MASH unit. And the MASH unit, they stripped everything off from me. My radio was left in the field. My radio had 12 hits in the back. Whoa. 12 hits in the back. When I got shot, I saw the person shoot me. And I saw it happen and I spun like this to get the hell out of the way. And he got me in the arm three times and, and spread my back. They did not go through. And so, MASH unit stabilized me to an army unit where they put me on a, um, just like on TV, uh, saw horses, stretcher. They triaged me, doctor came out, said I was, he came out to look at the wounds. He said, we're gonna probably amputate at the shoulder. So I said, all right, I need a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm, in, then I'm in this army hospital in Da Nang, we got rocketed. And the nurses are running around with mattresses to put them on all the wounded. Um, oh, jeez. And they get to me, and I said, you're not putting that on me. <laughs> so the next morning, she comes in, she's a major. She comes in and she goes, we only have one guy with a pair of balls in his unit. <laughs> oh, well, that's funny. On this ward. And it happened to be a Marine. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's talk about some South Americans, because holy moly. Well, Americans, put it that way. Well, yeah, some are, um, I like Maybe. my Oscars the best. I, uh, you better. <laughs> and, but my, I also like my red, t my red, ter my green terrors as well. They're beautiful. This, this video almost sounds like an advertisement for custom aquariums and it should be. I did not know these were custom aquariums when I sh showed up here. I mean, when you sent me the videos, I didn't know that. So this is perfect because I have a relationship with them too and they're, well, the they've been amazing to the, me. The new tank coming is from Custom Aquariums. Nice. And are they all on the seamless sumps? Or they're, did they're, you? They're all on their sumps. Yes, indeed. Yeah. You're using that as a refugium? Yep. Actually, there's two in here, believe it or not. This one's a big tank. And it's a the big sump system. Nice. That is a massive sump. None of mine are that big. That's impressive. And that took me down. 9-11 took me down because I got shot in a horrible firefight on September 11, 69, 8 o'clock in the morning. I know the exact time wow. because I was the radio operator for that, for that platoon. I know the exact moment, the exact time, and I remember it vividly. I only lasted 20 minutes into that firefight. Oh. And I got taken out. Um, mostly because of my own fault. But basically, I got, that's the day I got wounded bad. And so they, they tried to save your arm, is what you're saying? Yes, what took my arm was, was, was uh, mostly um, um, staph infections. Oh. I had pseudomonas, osteomenolitis. Pseudomonas about killed me. 
Wow. I was married to married two little kids when I came down with pseudomonas. They, they, my first amputation site, I was shot three times here. The first amputation site was below the elbow. And I got into a prosthesis and I developed neuromas. They went in, removed the neuromas, and I got pseudomonas. The pseudomonas took out my elbow. Mm. So then I just said to him, I've had it. Just take it off, take it off at the gunshot wounds. Wow. So I went to the Whiting Center up in Boston and I spoke to an amputation specialist who was an army doctor in Vietnam and he agreed and and I haven't had a problem with my arm since. Wow. Now, you have fish in here that I don't know that I've ever seen, and I want you to tell me that they came from Ron's. They all, so they're, they're all, all of Ron's. these are? These are all Ron cichlids. These albino Aren't they compressiceps. Beautiful? Lisa, did you see these? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. oh, the one looking right at you? Yes. They're spectacular. <laughs> I'm a sucker for albinos, and I've wanted, I've wanted to do a tank of nothing but a bunch of albinos. That's... I, I don't know if it'll ever happen, but you've got it. That's an albino. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I forgot the name of it. It's going to have a horn. It's, a, it's Looks like, not it very a old. It's no, only okay. about a, six months old. Um, oh, this one. He's cute. Anything albino is like, okay, I'm in. I'm, I'll go for it. That's fine. Frontosas. The borley eye is massive. The, is this a rhodos eye? That's how I say it. If I say it differently, that, that's a um, that's a sand diver. I like wonder everything. if that. And he's a small one. I had one of those a while back, and I loved it. He he passed, but I had him for like four years. I love sand divers because of the colors. Yep. That that borley eye though is absolutely massive. Mine might be the same size, but I don't. It, I don't know. You look at somebody else's fish, and they just seem so much bigger. No, I think all of his fish are bigger they than are yours. They are absolutely massive. Ooh, look at you. <laughs> We've even got Mbunas in here. Yes. By See, this is, this is the ultimate tank. There are a lot of people, you don't see it as much anymore, but when I first started on YouTube, if you had what you have here, you have a Victorian in here, you have Haps, Peacocks, Mbunas, you would get shunned on the internet. Like, how dare you? You still do. Do they? <laughs> oh, I post on Ron's, Ron's um, club, and people will text me back and go, what the hell are you doing? My gosh. Well, what are you doing? But here's my thing. I mean, I Do we see a problem here? I, I mean, look at these fish. They look cute. amazing. Yep. Growing up, I mean. You've got all three lakes, and you've got peacocks, oh, haps, and bunas. I didn't want you to trip. It, it's just, okay. what's, tell me this is a bad thing. It's not. It's working. The fish are not in trouble. They're not. They don't have cloudy eyes. Their fins aren't all nipped up. There, there's a couple that have a little couple marks. But good luck getting an African cichlid tank that you're not going to find that on. And some were born here too. Some of these fish were born here. Oh, I'm sorry. Now we're in your house. You do whatever you want to do. That, like you push right her right, out of the way. This guy right here. I've raised him. He's a couple of over three months old. I don't even know what he is, to be honest. I think he's a combination. He That's came out of the, he actually grew out of the 110 that I had. Okay. See, I want you, 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 and you. I think we're going to have to uh, give Ron a call. I, <laughs> I definitely agree. You had mentioned before your career after the Marine Corps with vets. Can you explain what it was that you did there? I worked for the uh, Connecticut State Labor Department. I started off in the old program, the Vet Aid Program, and my job was to interview veterans and find employment for them. And as I progressed, I started working with the bulk rehab with the VA, and what they would do is I became a disabled veterans representative. And then what they would do is they would give me a, a case, send me a case file, 
then I would go out to employers and develop a work site for them, conducive to their abilities. So I would go out to the employer and um, talk to the employer, tell them what I have, set up the interview, introduce the, the disabled veteran to the employer, and see if we had a match or not. I did that for a number of years, and then I, um, I got kind of tired after 12, 14 years of working with doing that. I wanted to do more. The state of Connecticut has a, um, a soldier, sailors, and marines fund. And they were looking for, an, well, actually, I interviewed to be the director. I didn't get the position, but they called me up and asked me if I wanted to be a senior investigator with the, with the agency. And so I didn't know what that was, but I took it and I learned how to do investigations. And I helped veterans who were in need. Um, if they needed food, I, made, I got them food. I, one case I had was a, a Korean Air veteran who had a TBI uh, uh, brain injury and his uh, conservator died so he didn't have anybody to take care of him. And the state of Connecticut was very, very slow in providing a conservator, and so was the VA. So I would every day go visit him in his apartment and make sure that he had, was clean. And I became his conservator for three months. I took him grocery shopping once a week. I, I cooked his meals every once in a while for him. Wow. So it was a rewarding job. But I also took care of widows, uh, made sure that they had their rent paid, their medical needs met. And I did that for like uh, two years. And then I got a phone call from the U.S. Department of Labor. It was called the Work Incentive Program, WIN. And I, I, my job was to work with young ladies who had young children and, and make, get them off the welfare system. So I would go out and OJT jobs for them or find OJT jobs for them um, and put them through school, get them educated, get them placed. So I have multiple talents. So Department of Labor, U.S. Department of Labor noted those talents. And I went to work for this, I went to Boston, I sat with the regional director. I met the Speaker of the House at that time of, of Congress and because and, uh, he was from Boston. Is it Tip O'Neill? Tip O'Neill. Nice. And a uh, nice guy. And Tip said to the uh, director, hire that guy. Oh, wow. So, <laughs> so, so um, I went to work for the Department of Labor, and then I worked my way up to the director and um, became a field investigator. And then when Bush won, uh, decided to uh, invade um, Iraq through Kuwait, or take back Kuwait. Um, he activated all the National Guard. And I had to go up in front of these kids and tell them about their rights. And that was under the old Veterans Reemployment Rights Act. So then I worked on the USERA program uh, in DC uh, because of my knowledge with VRR. I, I also helped write the Uniform Services and Reemployment Rights Act. And then I got involved in another program because of my experiences with losing my arm and all my job losses. I helped with the um, America's Disabilities Act. I uh, got a call from a congressman in Connecticut who also had known that I worked with on the USERA program and asked me if I'd be interested in giving them some feedback about my experiences in the, in the workforce and how I felt that it what we needed to do to make things better. You know how I got into this? When they brought me home from Vietnam, I went to West Haven Veterans Hospital. And I went from St. Uh, Albans Naval Hospital by ambulance. I was not, I, that's how I transported. They brought me to West Haven, I was like, I didn't, I was in shock for a while because when I got to West Haven, I got malaria right away. Oh, oh no. And malaria almost took me out. 
with the with the weakness and the gunshot wounds and everything else, the malaria almost took me out. But they had a solarium between the wards, and in the solarium they had a fish tank. So I would go out and sit out there with my cigarettes in those days, and I'd watch those fish, and they calmed me down. Wow. And that's where it started. And they were Oscars? No, I think they were. I think they were saltwater fish. Okay. I think it was a salt water tank. Years later, I met the gentleman who put those tanks in there. He was another uh, combat disabled veteran from the Air Force who got uh, wounded in South Vietnam. Wow. He got wounded in the northern part of Vietnam. My next question to you, I think everyone watching this video is gonna ask, the, one of their first questions is, his tanks look so good and he's 73 with one arm, how do you do it? Can you show it? Uh, not not literally show, but uh, can you, you tell? Have come on the day that I, you should have been well, here no. yesterday. <laughs> I, um, I move furniture, I cover everything up. Everything gets a tarp over it. The rug gets tarps on uh, the table, becomes my workbench. I drag in a 55 gallon brute garbage pail. Mm -hmm. With a, with a pump in it, with a big hose that I throw through the window behind you. And one of, the, one of the flowers. And I have a tube with a long hose on it. That's my, my siphon. And I vacuum the tank. First of all, let me start from the basics. Every day I clean the tanks. Every day I clean the glass. the glass. I clean the glass because when I do the maintenance in the tank, I don't have to clean the glass. It's and true. It cuts cuts time down. The only glass that I clean is the rear of the tank, the black. The back of the tank gets cleaned on a ladder. Um, I get on a ladder, on a small ladder, and I stand on it and I work in the tank. Sometimes I have to use my teeth. You know, sometimes I can use my arm. Um, but I get it done. And you know, when I'm working in the tanks, Nothing around me is happening. You know, I am focused right on what I'm doing. I have no pain in my hand. I have no pain in my body. I'm painless. As I'm talking to you right now, I'm, I am in a lot of pain. My hand is giving me a lot of pain. But when I'm in this tank, in that warm water, I have no pain. So I like being in there. Wow. You know. Well, it um, shows. And I, I take pride in my tanks. You know, um, I love my fish. My fish like me. Uh, this little guy right here, he, he fights me every time I, I clean the tank. Uh, <laughs> yesterday, he was attacking my, um, my siphon. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sitting in the chair, and he's over in the corner, and he's looking at me going like this. <laughs> does not like me cleaning his caves. Um, they're, they're special to me. They're your therapy. And they're interesting. You know, they're, they're they each one has his own personality. Uh, this guy right here um, was very badly damaged and he wouldn't let me take him out of the tank, so I treated the entire tank just to treat him. And now he's doing well. Um, they're just, they're special. And they all come from the same place, Ron Sicklitz. Wow. I, you know, he's, the band has been, he's been so good to me. We got to pay him a visit. Do any of the fish have names? There's too many of them to have names, aren't there? No, no. <laughs> Not even the Oscars. No, Mutt and Jeff are my Sicklitz, my, my, my arowanas. What Mutt is it Jeff. again? Mutt and Jeff. Nice. Arowanas. <laughs> And then there's this one. This is where all the big fellas are. These are my babies, yep. Oh. You said this was a 300? Almost 300, yeah. Okay. Gosh, they're huge. I mean, they're huge. Look at that they, guy. They are bigger than any of our fish. That Venustus is, that's, that looks like Vinny. Yeah, he does. He looks a lot like Vinny. We used to have a Venustus. He was about that size. We bought him at a, at a club meeting. Somebody brought him in and said, 
I'll sell him for 25 bucks because he's mean and he kills anything you put in the tank with him. Really? I put him in a tank like this, never bothered a single fish. I think size has a lot to do. Oh, here we go with size. Well, yeah, yeah here we size go. Size has a lot to do with it. <laughs> Insert, that's what she said here. That's what she said. <laughs> 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 but what gets people when they walk in this room and they go and they go left left to right, they're blown away. Oh yeah. I would be too. I mean, I was too. It, it's you're doing good. So what are you going to do with this empty uh, tank over here? <laughs> <laughs> these, these guys are being moved out. I'm taking the rock out and I'm going to put the rock in at the 240 and and um a lot of this rock in this tank is going to go into 242 because I don't like a lot of rock with these guys. That's mm -hmm. that, that's just the way that um, piece of uh, um, wood down. Oh, nice. It, well, it looks good. It works. It, is this on a seamless sump too? Uh, this is on um, this is on the same sump system. Wow. Nice. When Bill puts a tank together, he does it right. This is. I mean, it's custom aquariums. It's a, maybe a little expensive, but they're the best. Yeah. yeah you, 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 this is top quality. This was not intended to be a Custom Aquariums commercial, but it's the perfect Custom Aquariums commercial. But it is top quality. <laughs> Their I stuff mean, is tops. I can attest to this because Bill sent me an email with a video, kind of a shot of the whole room. And these tanks look just like this in that video that you sent. You're doing something right. They all look good. And I don't think it's a situation where he cleaned these up because he knew we were coming. They always look like I that. learned I mean, a look lot. at the fish. But I learned all this stuff from you. Oh, no, and you did. I also learned a lot from Jason. Good. Aww. The professor. I like to hear that. Um, it was your, st I, I tune in to you guys all the time because you know what the hell you're talking about. Even while he's cleaning. Even well, he. He knows what he's talking about. I'm good at acting like I know how, what I'm talking about. Give yourself more credit than that. I've told you that before. You taught me everything I know here. Wow. I mean, everything that I learned came from you. Aww. I'm serious. If I didn't have a microphone on my chest, I'd be patting my chest right now. That's. <laughs> When I got out of this hobby because of my, my post-traumatic stress issues and I couldn't maintain the tanks, and, I, and that's very important to me, uh, fish are very important to me, I, I gave up on it. And when I came out of seclusion, I like to call it seclusion, when I came out of my deep depression after six years, um, I went into landscaping because I love flowers and plants, and and I found landscaping to be you know comforting. It's a hard work, and it kept me very busy. But when the VA doctors told me that my left arm was so badly damaged that if I didn't stop doing what I was doing, I was going to lose total use. So that's when I didn't know what to do. So four years ago, I made a decision. And I started with a small aquarium, 75 gallon, and I put cichlids in it. And I bought the cichlids online, and they, a lot of them died. <laughs> um, uh, We've it, all been there. I just, I just had so many issues, and I didn't give up. I just wouldn't give up. Um, so. I got successful with that tank, and then I got another 75 gallon. Then I went up to 120 gallon. And I bought 110. Then I had a 90, and then uh, here we are. Here we are. Um, One of the things that stands out to me not only the impeccable condition of these tanks, but you at, at 73, been. I mean, you've been keeping fish 50 years. Yes you talk about it as excited as somebody who's been doing this six months you know that when you first start how exciting everything is it's just so amazing you act like somebody that's only been doing it that long like this is all still new to you and you're excited about it that is 
that's so inspiring to me. <laughs> well, you know, it has taken away the meds. This is your medicine down here. This is this is my medicine. This is my therapy. I'm not saying that I'm a hundred percent. I'm not. But if I have a bad nightmare or a terrible flashback, flashbacks are it's like I'm talking to you right now and suddenly you're, you're not, not there. Anymore. I'm talking to you but you're not there. The canopy, the jungle, the sounds, the effects, the radio squelch in my ear is there. So when that happens, I come down here, it's gone. Wow. I don't have those issues when I'm in this room. When I'm in this room, I'm not sick anymore. I don't have any mental issues. And because it's comforting, it's, it's not only the fish, it's the sound. Sure. It's the water sound. Um, it's my arowanas as they float across the tank, or my Oscars when they go next to them and they float right next to them. Mm -hmm. And they have, I think the arowanas, I believe, have a relationship with the Oscars. I don't know what it is. The Severns and the, and the Oscars and the arowanas seem to get along very well together. Well, we do have a few things out in the truck that, that we want to bring in for you. Even I though you, you don't have to. I know I don't have to, but I want to. So you can't stop me. I'm bigger than you. I mean, I'm, I think <laughs> just just having you here uh, is so important to me. I mean, it makes made my day. Well, so when I told my people who I was coming to talk to, they, all three of them, had family members with similar stories. So they said, whatever you want. Let me know. And they, so this is not from our inventory, although we would have done this. This was all sent to us to bring to you. Wow. From Fritz and Seachem and North Bend. So the arowana sticks, mine eat that. I don't have any arowanas anymore. That it's for arowana, but it's actually just like a jumbo fish pellet yeah, or Oscars floating pellet. Oscars will the Oscars them. will definitely yeah. eat it. Um, they will also eat these, the tropical sticks, which is very similar, but of course better than the Hikari food sticks. Be trying these. It's a 500 gram bag there. Wow. And these, your jumbo cichlids, it's a jumbo fish, but when it's got a front toes on the front, you know it's good. Oh, I love front toes. <laughs> and that's fish. the carnivore. That's the sinking pellet. It's a weight, it's a, they look like little cookie crisps, yeah. like the, the uh, cereal, but they sink down. I've never found a fish that doesn't eat that. Yeah. Plecos will eat it. My geos are going to love it. Oh, they'll absolutely love it. You mentioned earlier the Fritz glass cleaner. Oh, my God, I got a year's work there, too. That's what I, that's what I wanted to do. I, I asked my guys, I said, I want to give them a year's supply of this Actually, stuff. here it is. There you go. So now you have a year's worth. Fritz on. Oh. Anybody that doesn't use Fritz Zyme is just doing it wrong. Fritz Complete, that is your direct competitor to Prime. Okay. It's, Fritz will, Fritz won't be happy with me saying this, but they can't argue it either. It's, it's not the same product, but it's the same product. Does that make sense? Yeah, I know. It does the exact same thing. Removal of chlorine, chloramine, if you have that, which you don't because you're on well water. Uh, but it'll also help you out if you have any... Ammonia issues or anything like that detoxifies ammonia and nitrites. So yep. then we get into the Seachem Stability, which I know you bought. There's the big bottle of it. Yep. So that is 12 of the 500 milliliter bottles. Well, we'll need that for a while. <laughs> and that is a whole lot of Purigen. Oh. <laughs> you have ordered, you have, a, I know you have a lot of it. I love Purigen. Purigen is probably the reason why my tanks look so good. It is an amazing product. Everybody knows it. And then, of course, you need all of the bags to put Look it in. Look at that. Now, I ordered a case, which I thought was 12, but it's 24. Oh, <laughs> my God. So, you got enough of these bags to last you a year or so. I mean, or, if you don't get a year out, because you can use them multiple times. Yeah, right. And then, you didn't have any sick fish, but in case they ever do, 20 packs. Oh, look at that. 
Expel P. I, I don't know if you're familiar with I these am. medications. I am. Maricin, Paracleanse, and Maricin 2. You're basically prepared for anything. There you go. Hopefully you're, uh, as far as chemicals and uh, media, and not so much food because you got big fish, but Hopefully you're taken care of for a year. That I was appreciate the goal. it. I really That's really what really I wanted to do. Us any ideas of what you wanted. So we were just like, well, John was like, let me look at past orders and see what you got. That's in. because it was so nice just to have you here. Aww. Well, I'm not going to come up here and not bring you something. I, I wanted to thank you in person for your service and for everything else that you've done, but I also wanted to give you something to show I those really things. I really appreciate it. And it's not just me. Obviously, it's her too, but it's also the folks at Seachem Fritz and Northfin. Yeah. I'm telling you, all three of them were like, what do you want? Whatever you They're want. They're great people. So really, they took I really care of us. appreciate it. Very good. Thank You're you. good for a year, I hope. I am more <laughs> Yeah, I am. Really. I got to tell you, our visit with Bill and Linda was absolutely incredible. There was only one bad thing, and that's the fact that we were in a hurry because we had an 11-hour drive ahead of us in a really bad storm. Damn you, New York traffic! We could have easily spent all day at their place. Bill and Linda were so hospitable. They fed us a wonderful lunch, and we had a bunch of amazing conversations that were not on camera this is a day that Lisa and I will never forget for the rest of our lives. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as Lisa and I enjoyed making it. And if you did, you can look forward to plenty more of this coming down the road. I'm in talks with a bunch of people that have all kinds of situations going on with their aquariums, and they're not all like this. Bill's tanks were perfect, so we weren't really able to offer up any help, but we were able to bring him supplies to help him out for a very long time. Again, big shout out to Fritz, Seachem, and Northfin for helping us out with that. But some of the people that we're in talks with have some really rough situations going on. And we're gonna do our best to help them out. If you know someone that has an incredible story to tell or could use our help, email us at kgboxesofwater at gmail.com. Let us know their story and you never know, we might be visiting them next. If you like this kind of content and you want to support what we do, you can do that by clicking the join button down below, become a channel member. We're going to give you bonus footage from all of these projects that we do, including the full uncut interview with Bill Mason that we showed today. Clips of, we'll give you the whole thing. It's over an hour long. That guy has some stories to tell, trust me. If you don't want to become a member, I understand. Maybe you need some supplies or maybe some live plants or snails. You can order those up from us at keepfishkeeping.com. Lisa and I will ship them right out to you. And if you don't want to do any of that, just subscribe. That's free. You, and you get to see all of the stuff that we do in the future. You get to follow along on this journey with us. Trust me, you're going to want to because we're just getting started. Thanks for watching.